And we are recording. OK, um, so welcome everyone to Affordable Learning Georgia's featured speaker series. Um, this is a monthly event where we hear from our uh, recently completed grantees um, on the projects that they are completing and um, how they're going for them, what kinds of cool things they're doing, any challenges they me uh, any challenges they have and how they rise to them. So um, this month we are hearing from the film appreciation team, um, Dr. Elizabeth Moss and Dr. Candice William Wilson. Sorry, um, from the University of North Georgia. So do you guys want to take it away? Sure. All right. All right. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Candice Wilson and my colleague and fellow textbook creator Liz Moss and I are really excited to talk with you about our film appreciation textbook, which really grew out of a recognition that there was a need for a low cost textbook specifically catered to the learning strategies that we use within our own communication, media and journalism department and within the University of North Georgia itself. Now, before we delve into the textbook, I just want to tell you a little bit about the film appreciation course that the textbook was created to be used in. Now, the, the film appreciation course is a very popular course taken by many incoming freshman students who tend to be both film and digital media majors and non-majors. And multiple sections of the course is taught every semester with a cap of about 32 students per class. So there are a lot of student bodies passing through this course. And we really wanted to have a unified textbook across all sections of the film appreciation course that ultimately instructors of the course could approve and contribute to. And it's been, it's been quite a journey <laughs> creating an entire textbook within such a short time frame. But I think I can speak for Liz and myself when I say we're really proud of our little textbook. And I'll let Liz take us through some, of, some more of the context for this project. Yeah, um, it's, I like that you call it a little textbook because that was one of the goals. You know, the textbooks that were in existence already that we were using in the classroom, uh, they're between 330 and 360 pages. The, it, the textbooks were simply too long to actually read in a semester, and we really wanted to find a good balance where a, students would be able to actually have the time to read the entire textbook and also not be intimidated by how long each chapter was. We found that students really weren't finishing chapters and they were skimming and they weren't getting really involved and we wanted to write something that was really exciting and something that was Georgia specific. We wanted to have a textbook that fit the department, uh, but also kind of included all of the passion that we have in the department and, and show that off and all, all the things that we do in, in this field. Because um, really, this is the entry point for students in, into our um, film program. So we had been using um, three different textbooks in the classroom. These were our three options. Um, and we you know, I, I had used all three in the classroom. Instructors could kind of jump between them as, as needed. Um, and there were problems with each one. There are things that we thought we could improve on. We started noticing uh, how each instructor would be using the textbooks differently, how I, we started looking at old syllabi and everyone who had taught this course before looking at uh, which chapters they were assigning in which order um, and which films they were screening with each chapter. And we we're trying to include as many of those films as possible so that everyone uh, with all the styles of teaching could fit one textbook. Um, so I want to say a few things about each one of these just to kind of lay out how we decided on our content. The Boardwell Thompson option, the film art option, it really focuses on world cinema and we really love that. This is really the standard for film courses across the country. This is a really popular textbook. Um, the Barsom Monaghan book um, is the, the looking at movies book um, has a really approachable tone. It's um, 
uh, kind of easy to read and we really wanted to capture that. We wanted a kind of exciting tone that students would um, uh, feel comfortable reading and, and didn't feel like it was going over their heads and uh, way too theoretical. Um, but it also has a lot of mainstream examples. So we liked the idea of creating a balance between films that students have heard of already and so they can keep up with the examples and then films uh, that maybe they haven't heard of and ha kind of expanding their horizons. The last book, the Essential Cinema book, the Lewis book, um, is very short <laughs> and we liked this idea that we could shorten down this textbook to a manageable size and that students would actually get through the whole thing in one semester. There was one OER textbook option out there and we weren't too happy with it, which is why we wanted to, instead of adopting this, create our own. Um, the title kind of gives it away, Exploring Movie Construction and Production. It, it is a production heavy book um, and it, I, we didn't find that it was very appropriate for um, a college classroom. So we wanted to, um, we wanted to create our own free option. And we were also kind of frustrated with how students, you know, they would pay $120 for this textbook and non-majors especially would just sell the textbook afterwards and not delve too much more into it. Um, and we found, we started finding that majors would do that too because in later semesters we would ask majors, well, you know, you can look this up in your film appreciation textbook and we'd find out, oh, they no longer have that textbook. So we really wanted something that students could hold on to and not feel like they would have to exchange it, uh, that they would have for reference in the future. So um, th this is a layout of the chapters. This is something that we did as we were planning how to write. And notice the page numbers here, 530 pages, 550 pages, 330 pages. We thought these were all way too long. 85 we thought was too little material, so we're kind of playing Goldilocks here a bit trying to find a good medium. We're at about 150 pages, but since we're in e-text, the, the typeface is a little small, so I think if we ever do a physical form, it'll end up being closer to 200 pages. So film art, we really liked that there was a chapter on genre. That's something that we adopted. In essential cinema, we really liked that there was a chapter on writing papers about film, and that's something that we adopted too. Um, and so we were kind of trying to find this balance of things that all the textbooks do well, try to create an option that's very specific to the department, um, that is manageable, has an approachable tone, and covers a lot of the content that we thought was missing in, in these texts. And I'll, I'll uh, hand it over to Candice for, uh, for, for, for that content. I think you're still muted, Candice. All right, thank you. <laughs> I, I want to talk a little bit about the timeline uh, for bringing this, uh, this new textbook into being. We got to work as soon as we knew we had the textbook transformation grant because we had a keen awareness that although we would you know, source faculty and filmmakers to write inserts and contribute for the, to the textbook that it would largely be on our shoulders. And so over the spring semester, we met several times to hash out not only what the main aims of the textbook were, but the main underlying themes that would unite the textbook from front to end, because, you know, it would just be, it would be two different authors writing this textbook. And so we wanted it to seem um, pretty, to have the seamless quality to it. During spring 2019, we also designed and distributed faculty surveys to get a sense of their use of materials in the film appreciation classroom. And as you just heard, we analyzed existing film textbooks, cross-listed their topics, films, organization strategies to create the standard canon for a film textbook we began to investigate just how to design a textbook because you have to understand that neither Liz or I have, e have ever written or designed a textbook before. So we had a steep learning curve to get a handle of. <laughs> so we also in the spring 
began to corner our colleagues and elicit promises of specialist inserts for the new textbook. And this was all in the spring. So the spring was really busy for us. Summer and fall 2019 were basically spent just engaging in research, chapter writing, and editing of the chapters. And each, as each chapter was completed and revised, translating those chapters and any corresponding materials from colleagues and students to InDesign. We also around this time began to design the textbook more concretely. And Liz is gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, and, and by the spring 2020, we were able to pilot portions of the textbook in several film appreciation courses to gather data on the textbook use. By the end of the semester, we had a full textbook in hand. We did some last edits, revisions, with the aim of using this completed textbook in our summer and fall film appreciation courses. Now, on this, on this slide, uh, which hopefully everyone can see, I've provided the table of contents page to give you a sense of the chapters written for our new textbook. And we divvied up the chapters to uh, basically what were our respective strengths and specialties. I took on the introduction and the more theoretical and historical chapters one, two, three, seven on film history, narration, mise-en-scene and genre, while Liz delved into the conclusion and the more technical leading chapters four, five, six and eight on cinematography, editing, sound and beyond genre. And we acted as editors for each other's chapters and made sure that the introduction and conclusion flowed off each other in this way. So the textbook begins with the question, what is film? And returns to that question in its conclusion. And I have a quote up on this slide from our introduction that I'd, I'll just like to highlight as it gives a sense of our aims for our students as they use the textbook in, in the film appreciation course. By learning to appreciate film, we not only gain new insight, but also a new ability to perceive and challenge representations of the world. Peering through the frame of the camera, we see our own selves through the eyes of others across the globe. And so this also lies behind our textbook. This desire to have the student question film and media representations which is a skill so important, especially today, but also to see themselves and how they perceive the world through the eyes of the marginalized, of other cultures and genders outside their own experience. Uh, here are some more excerpts from the textbook. I know you're probably not able to read anything here, but I just wanted to give you just, you know, a quick glimpse of what the textbook looks like a little bit as well. Um, it was really important to us to create a textbook that sought to engage with, um, you know, some of the gaps in the study of film. You know, many of the, the film textbooks or approaches to film appreciation tend to take a specific Eurocentric approach that focuses more heavily on stories told from a Western point of view and thus often from the standpoint of white male narratives and vision. And as such, our textbook deliberately examines race and gender in cinema. We provide examples from films outside the Western canon. So for example, in our section on lighting that you see an excerpt of to the right of the slide, we looked at the historicity of light in cinema that privileges and continues to privilege white skin and provided a link to a popular HBO series, Insecure, that would be familiar to most students where the director of photography takes us through how she lights for dark skin tones. Future-wise, it'll be nice to have our own film students perhaps create a video that showcases this use of, of light in the textbook. 
And this way too, we didn't just look at male directors, we spent significant time exploring the cinematic choices of female directors and female narration in cinema. And we discussed films and other media from around the globe to cultivate these examples, not just of diversity in media, but of different approaches to storytelling, vision, and, and therefore the representation of others. So as you can see, <laughs> we, were, we were very ambitious with our objectives for this new textbook. We, we wanted to, also we wanted to highlight how film grows out of culture and impacts culture in turn, especially how it emerges from traumatic cultural events and memory, you know, such as the experience of the atomic bomb that births monsters like Godzilla in Japanese cinema, for example or the waves of feminist movements that help give rise to stronger, more proactive female characters in media, or even how her grows out of what the society tries to repress or who it tries to oppress, which I think tends to resonate with the students, especially nowadays when so many of them are involved in the social movements of our current times. In this way, the textbook is particularly situated for this moment in time, both in terms of its digital format and its content. It's, it's dotted with examples from mediums other than film that the students are either watching now and therefore familiar with, like, like The Tiger King, <laughs> right? which is a, a popular docuseries on Netflix, if you haven't seen it, you know, or the, the uses or, 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 or that uses social media platforms like YouTube to make the engagement with creation more current and fun. And okay, and so now I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to Liz to talk a little bit about our, the interactive design of the textbook, which lends to the fun aspect of it, um, we believe for the students. Yeah, so one, yeah, one of the things that we really wanted to do, as Candace said, is to make this a fun experience <laughs> dealing with this textbook. Um, one of, I'm trying to flip my screen here. <laughs> one of the things we thought was so exciting about, um, about an e-text was that it could be interactive. And so unlike the, the physical textbooks that we were teaching from before, which, you know, students would leave at home, they wouldn't bring into the classroom, and then they, you know, they just use it in one way. We thought that we could have a textbook that could be used in multiple ways. And so um, I want to point out a few things. I hope everyone can see my screen here. I just wanted to point out a few things that we did here where we were trying to create an intertextual uh, design. So our contents page will jump to the chapter um, when you click on it. And every contents page will do that. It'll just jump right to where you wanna go. Um, we've got a little, uh, a little section at the beginning that explains how this textbook works, but every gold box that we have here is a YouTube clip that will take you to that. And based on the surveys that we uh, ask students to fill out, it sounds like, and, and based on our own experiences teaching this textbook, it sounds like students really were clicking on those clips. And so they didn't really have to wait to get to a computer after they were reading the textbook to actually see what, say, a zoetrope actually looks like. They could click on that um, clip in the textbook and then see their automatic example of it. And we, we thought this would be really helpful to students because you know, the difficulty in a film class is that we're talking about an audiovisual medium and yet we just have this very um, <laughs> kind of uh, solid thing on a table, a textbook to read, and it doesn't really fit the material that we're, we're discussing. Um, we have these gold boxes, these hyperlinks throughout, but we also have additional readings sprinkled throughout. So here, for example, uh, we discuss Tom Gonning's idea of cinema of attractions, and then if students would want to see the essay itself. We, we did find uh, a lot of these essays up on uh, in free version, and we, we would be able to get students over there. 
We also cross-linked different chapters. So for example, here we talked about special effects in, in several parts of the textbook and we hyperlinked them together. So if you wanted to see more on special effects, it could jump you to the cinematography chapter. And then here you could jump back to uh, the early cinema opening about special effects. Um, one thing that we really wanted to include because we knew that this is how students were using the textbook is these glossary sections. So at the end of every major section and at the end of every chapter, we have this um, glossary that brings together all the terms that students have learned in that chapter. And then at the end of the whole textbook, we've got our full glossary that's alphabetical. And we also uh, wanted to include these questions for consideration. And this is for students, definitely, but we thought this was a nice way of bringing bringing together all of the instructors who teach this class. There are many, and this is a class that's often taught by first um, first timers at UNG. So, you know, when a when an instructor comes in to teach this class, sometimes it's the first thing they're teaching here, and as a way of kind of helping out the teaching process and and giving each instructor a sense of what this class is about. We really like this idea of questions for consideration, um, how to expand the textbook, where else could this go? We don't have to cover everything here. Obviously, every instructor makes this class their own. Um, and we have these inserts throughout, and uh, Candace is going to say more about this, but I just wanted to show you what this would look like. Uh, we have additional voices, additional um, professors from the department and also outside the department and filmmakers who are writing small inserts, two or three pages. Um, and this, we really have this idea of bringing in additional voices and having, um, you know, a multi-voiced textbook that shows off all of the different specialties within the department and outside of it. And we're going to talk about this in a second, but I just wanted to show what the writing chapter at the very end of the textbook looks like. Um, we have in this writing film analysis, which we realized was a very rare type of chapter that we wanted to include. It, it gives students a guide and a kind of cohesive guide across all uh, sections of the course of how to write about film. Um, how to be specific about cinematography and mise-en-scene and editing, how, how to be specific in your paper, and how to put together an argument about audiovisual mediums. We often assume that students are experts <laughs> on, on film because, you know, we've all been watching this since, since we were um, young children. And that uh, students, young students especially, uh, are experts in media and audiovisual media. But the um, the writing part, I think, trips everyone up because it's really hard to explain what you're looking at. So we thought a writing chapter would be very important here. And we've got writing tips and how to expand on ideas and not just write. The costumes are strange, but get into the explanation and get into the um, philosophy of why the costumes are made the way that they are, what the filmmaker is trying to express through those costumes, and, and, and get students to write in a more formal and rigorous way about film. All right, so I mean, I'm, while Liz is bringing the PowerPoint back on for us, I, I want to talk a little bit about the help because we could never have written this textbook without the help and inspiration of our colleagues and students. It would have been impossible, right? Um, and well, once the slide is up, you'll see that we, we actually begin our, um, okay, let me, yeah, we actually, we get to it. We begin our textbook with an acknowledgement of all the individuals who have helped us in our writing journey. You can see just like a little small snapshot of it uh, on the right hand side of the slide. The we're, we're proud to say <laughs> that the textbook is a purely Georgia product in that all the faculty contribut comp contributors have lived and worked in Georgia. And the students, of course, they're, they're UNG students. So we call it a Georgia product. Um, so Michael Locker, Tobias Wilson-Bates, 
Alex Lukens and Jeff Marker all provided uh, the specialized inserts that Liz just showed an example of for the textbook. Uh, and they looked at the three act structure, time travel narratives, early film gimmicks, and um, the director Norman McLaren, respectively. Um, and we also have to give a shout out to Dan Cavanis because he was invaluable um, in providing feedback, both as an early reader of the textbook and from his film appreciation students. Uh, but he was also just a veritable cheerleader for the project. He came with a lot of energy and we love that. Now, part of the reason why we wanted to have these different voices in the textbook was to really break up the hegemony of our own voices and show the different directions that the field can go into. The, the inserts also provided moments to go more deeply into a topic, you know, something that we were unable to do with the chapters because by their very natures, the, the, the chapter had to be broader in scope. We have to also thank the UNG students. The majority of students that you see up on this list are the spring 2020 film appreciation students who volunteered feedback on the textbook when it was in draft form, which was really invaluable in letting us know we were on the right track with the textbook. Two of our students, of our UNG students, Eric Azatea and Hope Gandhi, um, one's a film major and one's a non-film major, were the students who provided writing samples for chapter nine in the textbook that Liz also just showed us uh, of. And, you know, as I uh, just adding to what Liz said, you know, the this chapter was particularly important to our aims because, you know, again, the, the film appreciation classroom is an important entry point to teaching students just how to write a film paper. And many of them struggle with knowing the difference between writing an argument and writing plot summary. And we hope that this chapter would help guide them more concretely on their writing journeys. Now, both Hope Gandhi and Eric Azatua were, were in my film appreciation classes, and they were really excited to contribute their writing to the textbook to help future film appreciation students. Their essays in their original forms were actually four to five pages, and so we had to take excerpts from their papers to provide a snapshot of a compare and contrast writing sample against a close analysis writing sample. And we highlighted the successful moves that Hope and Eric were making in their papers through having brackets on the side with notes explaining their writing choices. We hope that seeing writing from UNG students who were previously in their own shoes would inspire current film appreciation students in their own film writing. We also just wanted to include the film appreciation student in the process of constructing this textbook, which was for them. And not just through the use of surveys, even as these surveys allowed us greater insights into student needs, but via the use of their class writing that would enable the students who contributed to perhaps cite this textbook as a publication of their writing. So it was a little bit of a win-win there. Um, but I'm gonna turn it over to Liz now to discuss uh, student surveys. Yeah, and we do, um, I wanna make sure we, we take a minute to talk about future plans at the end here, because yeah. I think we have more plans for students to be involved too, yeah. Um, I just wanna say a few things about the data we've been collecting. We're not quite done yet. We, we started collecting data when we knew we were writing the textbook, but most instructors were still using the original textbooks I had described at the beginning. And we've been giving out the same survey to both the original textbook and then our own. And we've been trying to figure out a way to assess how students value the textbook and not just you know what they think of it generally, but exactly how useful it is. So for the original textbook, we have 50 students surveyed so far. They were using both the film, uh, film art textbook and the looking at movies textbook at two campuses. 
Um, generally, students were not dropped based on textbook costs. Um, uh, you know, they were already in the class when they were taking the survey, so it might be that some students did drop the class, but those aren't the ones who took the survey. Um, generally, they were happy with the textbook in terms of the content, the balance of image and text, but 60% thought the textbook was more expensive than they had expected, and 40% didn't think the textbook provided value equal to its cost. Um, um, Dr. Moss? Yeah. Uh, it, you're still on the uh, student writing slide at the moment. Oh, I think uh, something... Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Better, yeah? Yep. <laughs> okay, there we go. So uh, here we go. So this is the slide I'm describing. So 90% uh, had not dropped a course due to its textbook cost. 60% thought the textbook was more expensive. 40% thought it provided a value equal to its cost. Um, and we're still getting data for the new uh, textbook, the OER textbook. So far we have 30 students um, surveyed and of course they're using our textbook. It's only one campus so far. Overall, the numbers have improved. I mean, they were pretty high to begin with, but the real change here is that 77% think the new textbook is less expensive, of course, because it's free. <laughs> and 77% think that the textbook provides value equal to its cost. So those numbers are definitely higher. Um, again, overall, everything's higher where uh, students feel that um, the textbook is very helpful, 100% think it's helpful for understanding content. Um, they think the ba balance of image and text is good. Uh, so we're, we're happy with this so far. I mean, this is why we were writing the textbook. So we're happy with these results. They, they fit what, what we were expecting. During the piloting process where, where we, um, oh, sorry. Uh, so Jeff is asking, was this where they were asked, um, was this a question where they were asked, is it equal to its zero cost? Uh, no, just, um, just them assessing the value of the textbook. OK, so they weren't saying like, oh, I would only have this if it's free. It's it's worth zero. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, obviously the cost changes things there, but I think we oh. had enough questions. I think we had 10 questions and then we had um, uh, kind of qualitative uh, feedback, too. So I think between those two, we can tell that they're happy with the product regardless of the cost. Yeah. Um, so we did during the piloting process in spring 2020, we did um, hand out a survey voluntarily. Students were told this is a draft. <laughs> Whatever you give us is going to affect the final product. So please tell us what you think. And during that process, our students, I'm not going to read through the slide, but during that process, the students seemed to be happy with what we were doing. And so we just kept going in the direction we, we were already going. But we liked having that confirmation in that last editing stage, that last semester, that we were on the right track. And it was really nice to, to see students happy with this process. Um, we did have students give us written feedback too. Um, and overall, the original textbooks were helpful. They liked the film stills. You know, it's not like they were unhappy with that product, but they did say that it costs too much. It was overloaded with information, of course, because it's over 500 pages, um, and that they only used five of uh, the 10 or so chapters. Um, and when we asked the same sort of general feedback from students for our textbook, um, they had similar feedback in terms of strengths. Um, they liked that it was uh, comprehensive. They liked the examples. They liked the film stills. They also liked that it was free. <laughs> they, they would write about that. And they really liked the interactive link. So we were happy that they were using those. Um, we did get some weaknesses. They wanted more visuals, which maybe in the second edition will add more visuals. And they did uh, think some of the examples were overly detailed. Um, that came from one student, I think. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll have to think about that, but um, it, it might be good for them to have overly <laughs> detailed examples as models for their papers. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how much time we have, but I, I thought we could talk a bit about the, the our future plans because we do want a second edition. Um, and there, there are a few things that we want to add in here. I don't know, Candace, if you want to jump in, but um, we've been talking about 
putting together video content so that we're not always linking out to, to YouTube or linking out to another website, but we could actually get students involved in creating some video content for the textbook so that we would have control over that and the link wouldn't disappear. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then that way too, you know, we could, we have faculty that they are producing their own video and movie content that it will lend to just making the film appreciation textbook even more of a collaboration for the department itself by having, you know, studio and faculty video content. Yeah, and that's a good point because we have so many faculty who are producing work, uh, producing films, um, and we had little time to write this. <laughs> so we were focused <laughs> on the writing and the editing and getting this out. Um, but you know, now that we have time to actually go back and get those films in there, uh, it would be great to, to link faculty work um, and, and use those film stills too. Yeah, and it's worth saying at this point too, Liz, that you know, when I talked about us cornering, cornering faculty, you know, to with to get their promises of um, contributing to the textbook, that we have a couple of more inserts that we're expecting, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have uh, hopefully an insert on wrestling media and an insert on editing philosophy um, and hopefully more too. Yeah, we're still trying to find um, volunteers of, of subjects. Yeah. At risk here, though, will be the table getting a yeah. bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, since the students, you know, um, I've been teaching um, a film appreciation class this fall semester online and uh, the students have expressed that they really, they really love the textbook, and one of the things that they like about it is how um, short the chapters are. They they feel like they can read it and complete it, you know. And they come into the classroom, um, it's it's clear they're reading it, which is which is really cool when I hear them um, quoting things <laughs> back to me that I know are coming from the textbook. It makes me really happy that it's working in that way. So the the we'll have to keep an eye on the length as we continue with um, revisions. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, to that point, we have had a few requests to have a physical copy, which I. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that and keep it free. I don't think that's possible. But if we ever do have a physical copy, I think the text is going to have to change because we can't assume people can zoom in. And I think it will get a bit longer. I think it'll be pushing the 200 mark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we did get a few notes from faculty. That's the asking for a physical copy it comes from a faculty member. Uh, but we did have notes from students that I that were interesting that I hadn't even thought about, like. One student asked if our PDF could have capabilities to add notes, and I'm not sure how to do that. I'll figure it out, but I think that's a great thing to add to a second edition so that students will be able to add notes to their um, to their textbook and and hold on to that for the future too. And then um, some faculty members have asked for an acting chapter, which I know is very popular for students. So we might have to turn that into an insert because neither one of us are experts in that, in that area. <laughs> All right, um, shall we turn it over to questions? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we don't have any questions in the chat at the moment, but if anyone has any, feel free to go ahead and either turn your mic on or ask in the chat. Um, while we're kind of waiting um, to see if we have any questions, though, I do want to say, um, you were talking about how students want the ability to put notes into their PDF. Um, and there are um, there are like note and annotation tools in Adobe, but there's also in your manifold version um, a lot of annotation capabilities there for students. Um, and so I actually haven't. Um, my my original plan for these presentations was to also show the manifold version of every text, and I haven't actually done that for any of them. Um, but I think that your text would actually be a really good example of that if we want to show that while we wait for any questions. 
I'll pull that up real quick. Yeah, and also while we're while we're waiting, I want to go back to Candace, your point at the beginning about how this is a completely new genre of writing that <laughs> I had not anticipated being something I'd have to adjust to. I'm so used to, and we talked about this, we're both so used to writing research papers, right? Uh, and things to publish and, and to have an audience of students rather than researchers is a, is a tough shift. <laughs> and, and it took us a while to kind of find our tone. But I think, um, our, our system where one person writes the chapter, the other person adds to it and edits. And I think we kept each other in check that way. Yeah, I think so. It was definitely a challenge <laughs> figuring out how do you write a textbook? You know, you, you read textbooks and it, I mean, it, it definitely gave me a newfound respect for every single textbook author out there because it's, it's, definitely a different way of um, writing and approaching material. Yeah, so this um, this is your manifold instance, uh, your open ALG instance of your of your text. And you can see we have your like downloadable PDF here. We also have a source HTML. That's because when I put it in manifold, I converted it to HTML so that we could maintain all of the interactive features. Um, but one of the cool things is that like if we go in here and um, jump to one of your chapters, um, when students are logged in, they can actually come in here and highlight um, and annotate their the the text and they can do it privately or publicly. Um, so there's a lot of cool features here in the the interactive uh, sort of ebook version um, as well. And then we also um we have your videos embedded in here too um i don't know if you guys had had the chance to look at this one or not um not in depth i had no idea that you could I did like that mm -hmm. yeah yeah cool. yeah so that's um that's one option as far as allowing um uh, allowing students to make notes and things um you can you can even in there uh, you can create a group um, for your class so that everyone's notes you could ask them to share their notes to that group so that maybe only your class can see it um, and and then there's also the public stuff so that like you know you could have notes from uh, your students sort of accumulate over time even so um, yeah there, there's some pretty cool pretty cool features there. Um, but then they could also just annotate their own personal version through Adobe if they have access to it. Um, I just realized that when I uh, took control of the screen, your PowerPoint went away. I'm sorry about that. You're welcome to pull that back up. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Because I, um, I think you know what we've been doing so far is just uploading the textbook to the D2L sites for each individual course. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to have to do it differently next semester. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's there. The 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 manifold things it's got. It's got some pretty cool features in there that I think um, a lot of people haven't really had the chance to play with. But because yours has those interactive pieces, the videos and things, um, it was a really good option for putting it in there and, and making it um, fully interactive. Um, so you might play a little bit with that. Um, I'm not seeing, um, I, have, I don't see any questions in the chat still. Um, did anyone want to ask by turning the mic on? All right. Um, well, I guess that is, uh, unless you guys have anything else to add, I think that's that's what we have for you today. Do you guys have anything anything else you want to add before we close out? I mean, I think just to, just to say that it's really been a great experience working on this textbook. You know, as I said, I'm, I'm teaching 
well, I, the semester is basically done, but I used it for the first time this semester. And uh, the, the, you know, when, when we wrote the textbook, we added these questions on nuggets in the, in the textbook for the students to chew on. Right? And um, it's, it's been interesting seeing how the students react to the things that they read in the textbook. For instance, I had um, I had them watch one of the films that was discussed in the textbook. And in the text, in the textbook, I questioned whether a beloved character even existed. And when the students came to class, they were in an uproar <laughs> over even the, the thought that this uh, this character was not real. And it, it, it just created this great space for conversation and debate in the classroom and was evidence that they were reading it. <laughs> so I was very pleased. I don't think they, they actually remembered that I co-wrote it. And so they were being very uncensored. So it, it was very funny, but um, I've, I've, I've already noticed the difference in the classroom with this new textbook, and I'm um, I'm excited to continue using it. Yeah, I, I concur. <laughs> it's been it's been a really great experience, and um, I think we overcame our learning curve really quickly, <laughs> and, and and got it um, together in in a really exciting, interactive way pretty fast. And I've I've been really enjoying you using it in the classroom, and. Honestly, the e-text came at a really good time, frankly, because you know we went online and to have this online textbook um, that's in a format where we thought it would be exciting to use, I think this is the right moment to have that kind of exciting, uh, tangible product that, that has to be used in an online form, yeah. It sounds like you guys are getting some really good um, sort of engagement um, results from from your textbook and and also just um, the like you said, sort of the 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 timeliness of uh, moving to an ebook um, is really important. Um, I saw I saw that Stacy. Oh, Stacy is just gave us a chat. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, but she'd just like to say thank you for sharing this. It looks like an excellent resource and a very rewarding project. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, um, so if we don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Um, and so.